After two years of anticipation, brought on largely because I saw the game being showcased at almost every video game conference I attended during that time frame, Poncho is finally here, and not a moment too soon. But does Poncho live up to expectations? As is often the case in gaming, and life in general, my answer to that question is slightly more nuanced than a binary yes or no. Poncho's most immediate feature is his gorgeous pixel art. Real care has been taken to craft one of the prettiest pixel games of recent memory, and it truly stands as a testament to how much care and attention Dalvin Interactive has put into the game. Cherry blossoms stir in the wind with fantastic clarity, NPCs animate with genuine lovability, and the world as a whole feels incredibly vibrant and alive, which is quite an ironic thing to say about a post-catastrophic pixel game. Poncho's core mechanic also pleases the eye, and adds an extra layer of difficulty to an already challenging platform experience. A simple press of the right or left trigger will bring Poncho into the foreground, or force him into the background, respectively. The uses made of this mechanic consistently impress, right up until the final moments of the game. The soundtrack delights every step of the way through Poncho's unfortunately limited campaign. I particularly enjoyed coming across caves or open woodland simply because they played host to some of the most beautiful music during my exploration of them. I still find myself humming the music to levels days after completing the game, which is always a sign of a stellar soundtrack. It's a shame then, considering how much I've almost universally lauded Poncho up until now, that the rest of the game simply doesn't live up to the standards set by the presentation. It feels like the team at Dalvin Interactive was afraid of experimenting or expanding on certain concepts. After exploring the first level for a bit, for example, you're given a red box which contains a new ability that allows you to slam into the floor and break unsettled ground. Thereafter, I was anticipating the addition of other new abilities that would help to expand the gameplay, but they never materialised. Later on in the game, there's a lake stage which offers a brilliant new perspective of looking at the world through water and introduces its own unique challenges. Unfortunately, the feature only appears very briefly, for about 5-10 to 10 minutes, and then is then quickly discarded like a bad idea, never to be seen again. The same happens to a number of other new mechanics. They're introduced, then rapidly shelved. On the verge of having greatness at their fingertips, the developers at Delve Interactive narrowly managed to let it slip away. The narrative also lacks depth. A cryptic scene at the start and a few lines of dialogue are all you have to go on until the very end of the game, at which point everything is quickly explained and some context for your actions and the events in the game is finally supplied. What little narrative there is is actually very well written, but there's simply not enough of it and the pacing borders on the bazaar. There are also some slight issues with the gameplay. Jumping off the corner of a ledge will sometimes result in a smaller jump, which means you instantly die. Moving platforms that transition between the background and foreground are sometimes out of sync, and there's a lack of visual cues to identify the layer of the world you're on when you're in the air, an issue that caused many deaths during my brief playthrough. It's a shame that Poncho has so many glaring issues. There are inspired moments throughout, and the pixel art is often incredibly high quality, but Poncho often fails to capitalise on the great ideas that are briefly introduced. It's still an enjoyable game to experience, but it could have been deserving of so much more than a lukewarm recommendation.